This is a fly that has been around for a long time. It's in the Fulling Mill catalog, and it's a stonefly nymph that, that has a kind of a cool story, but it's called the Mask Marauder, and this is version 2.0. You got to see how we're making the back legs and the wing case on the top. It's pretty killer. Dude, that's a big brown rose. The masked marauder. This is a fly that I've kind of been playing with for, geez, I don't know, 15 years or so. Back when I worked at, at another shop called Fish Tech, I worked with a dude named Mickey Anderson, and he is a fish ninja. And he was going through a bunch of stones, and he wanted a stonefly that was pretty much black on one side and yellow on the other. And this, this style of stonefly has caught me a ton of fish. So anyway, this is kind of my iteration of a stone that's two-toned like that. And also it has a few extra things from the original one that we did. Um, so anyway, let's just jump right into it. This is a 2X long hook. This is a 5262 size 10. So it's 2X long size 10. I've got a four millimeter countersunk bead and I'm also gonna add some lead wire. This is 020 lead wire. And Mickey told me always do 13 wraps. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Pro hack: if you pull, give it some tension and wiggle, it'll break off and it will even taper it down. Harder to do on the back, but kind of clean right there. Now I'm going I'm to push that all the way forward, but I want about a fingernail's length of hook shank behind the bead, so I'm just going to squeeze my thumbnail right there. And it does that. It just pushes it back. And once I have it pushed back, I'm going to take some super glue, tag my, my uh, lead, and just push the bead up on that. And it will keep it in that spot. And you'll see why we need to do that. All right. Just get started. I, I think I have just some Semperfly 12 aught classic waxed dark brown or mocha brown or something. But use a darker thread. Could even use black if you wanted, but I'm going to start out with with putting the tails in. And the original had biots and uh, rubber legs actually work really nice. And this is like a micro, you know, grizzly flutter leg, something like that. Oh, that one had some super glue on it. Are you trying to sabotage me, Spence? <laughs> I bet it was Brigham. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just tie in one of these pieces of rubber leg material up high, wrap it back down to the very end of the fly, and then back up, fold this leg to this side and do the same thing over here. All right. So those should kick off with a fly at a little V. And these, these tails really don't need to be very long. Uh, that's maybe even too long if you're looking uh, to match exactly what they look like. But they add movement, so that's where they stay. All right. So this fly, I also wanted to have, you know, even though it's two-tone and dark on the top, I wanted the, the dark color to be broken up with something. So I'm going to add some size small holographic tinsel. And that's going to go all the way up the back and also through the middle of the wing case. So I'll tie that on first. I'm just going to tie that right on top of the fly. Wrap that all the way back. The next thing is pheno skin. So pheno skin is actually much more flexible than thin skin. And it lends itself really well to this fly. So that's what we'll use. I'm going to cut out a thin section and then I will later cut out a thicker section for the wing case but you know we're talking pretty thin just a, a little stripe up the back of the fly is what we're going for okay so we're going to tie that again in again right where the lead ends so once that's tied in, I can just lay it over the top of the body, go back, 
and now we have a pretty clean little tie-in point and this fly is going to have a rib of gold wire. This is really cool stuff. It's the soft wire from Uni. Uh, really easy to work with. I just pull it off the spool and you can just take it with your fingers and break it. Do you see me whiff that first time? I tried to break it. Save yourself though. Goodness gracious. This is, it's good that I've been lifting lately. All right. So I'll tie this in about right here and just I'm going to run that on the far side of the hook because when I start to wrap this, I'm going to wrap going this way. So the first turn is going to be under the fly and it won't screw up my shell back on this if I put it on the far side. Okay, now we're going to just dub a body and this stuff is awesome. They're just the standard hairline hairtron in golden stone. And yes, you guessed it, you can tie this in all different kinds of sizes and colors. Um, just a, it's probably my best stone fly pattern. All right, so I'm going to start just dubbing that nicely onto the, the thread. And we do want it to be kind of a, a thicker body. This, this sucker is like dad bod status. Spencer assures me there's nothing wrong with a dad bod. All right, so we'll just wrap this forward. As you can see, there's a nice little taper that kind of happened because of the way the lead was. And I'm going to add a little more. Okay, so once I'm right here, the next step is to take that thin skin. We're going to center that on the body. And we're going to just pull that right over the top. And pull the flash up over the top of that. Trim that off. And now we are going to wrap the wire. Try to keep dubbing out of there as best we can, but no biggie if some of it escapes up to the north. Okay, so our rib is in. I'm just going to catch that. Take the rib, bend it against where it came from, and that will pinch it against that thread. Once I do that, I can just kind of rotate that with my fingers, and it will come right off. That is slick thread. Goodness gracious. Okay, the next thing I'm going to use is this Solares Bone Dry Plus. If you like bone dry, this stuff is maybe even twice as durable. So I'm just gonna really lightly coat the back of this fly. And <laughs> it's clogged. Now if you do have clogged resin like I just ran into, these are three bucks for three. The loon caps work for almost every resin company. So this is the best way to unclog it. Take it, boom, in the trash, Unclog it by putting a new one on. Spence, they didn't know they were going to learn about resin today. That's actually pretty obvious, right? <laughs> I didn't teach them anything. All right, so we're going to put some resin on this bad boy. And we'll just cure that. Now for the thorax. And this is kind of a weird thorax, so there are some sequences that need to happen here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some dubbing right behind the bead. I'm just going to fill up that gap and it's it's going to be pretty buggy, so 
we'll make it buggy. All right, so I'm going to terminate my thread right in the middle of this ball of dubbing. You can get out of here, guard hair. Adios. All right, so I'm just going to take my thread and wrap in the middle of this dubbing ball and build up a thread base right there. Now I'm going to take the bigger size of Grizzly Flutter Legs, the normal size, and that's what I'm going to build the legs out of. Just tie one on one side with a few turns. Loop around the leg material to the other side. Tie that in and now we can adjust those legs as needed. And I'm just going to give this a quick trim so this isn't just hanging off there. And we'll trim those later. So now I'm going to take more dubbing and you can switch to ice dub if you want at this point. Like this is a really cool, you can do the whole thorax out of ice dub, but I'm just doing it out of the same dub. Just because this stuff's really buggy and I'm going to show you how to pick it all out. It's going to look awesome. Okay, so just cover up that thread, pull your legs back and bring it in front. And now we're ready for this uh, wing case. I'm just going to fold those legs back while we work on this because it's going to, this is going to be a little bit of work here. Right, Spence? Yes, okay. lots of work. Thank you. All right, now I'm going to take another piece of pheno skin and I'm going to cut it maybe just a tiny bit wider than the bead. So just like this. Okay, now I'm going to cut a notch out of the end of it. So we have a little situation that looks like that. Get out of here. Sometimes this paper can stick on there really well, especially after you cut it. So if you just stick your scissors in there, you can peel it off. All right, so. What I'm going to do is I'll take this, this wing case and I'm going to lay it over the top of the fly. And I'm going to make it so that the little notch hits the end of the thorax. So right there. Roughly. Real loose wrap of thread. That way you can get the thin skin or the, the pheno skin to lay down without folding. And once I have it where I want it, I'll, I'll, I'll add a few more tight wraps. Now with our flash... Um, We'll tie in just one piece of the small gold holographic flash right in the middle of the head. It's important to leave this, that one long. Tie it in longer than you think. So that's tied in just with a few turns and that'll be covered in epoxy so it'll be durable. Then I'm gonna take the whole thing and fold it back. Few turns and then I'm gonna take that thread, go, go over the top of the bead. Oh, that one just kind of automatically did it. All right, so from here, you're gonna wiggle that back and forth and that will take your, your thin skin perfectly on the, on the side of the bead. And again, loose wrap, kind of tease it where you want it to be. And it will end up like that. And this stuff's really stretchy. So if I give it some really tight wraps. All right, so I'm gonna do some real tight wraps on that because now I'm gonna cut this off and if I can stretch this as I cut, it will kind of suck back into itself and I should be able to come in here and cover up those cut ends. Now I just take that piece of flash, fold it down over the head. So now I have a piece of flash running all the way up the whole fly. And before I cut that, I'm gonna just fold that back mostly to keep it out of the way and I will whip finish. I like the midge whip finisher with this because you kind of have to get in at an angle just because of how we put so much stuff at the head of the fly. Okay, so I'll trim that off. We can get rid of this loop now. It's ready. All right, so, all right, so we're gonna put resin over pretty much all the, the pheno skin. 
using that bone dry plus again. And it should still have some shape. I don't want to just make it into a big blob. And then I'm pulling this piece of flash back as I cure the resin. And that will make sure that it stays down in the resin and it's not going to flop around. Okay. So off goes the flash. And for these legs, um, the back leg should be roughly about to the end of the, the body. If you can see what I'm doing, I'm holding on to the vise with my left hand and using my thumb to brace my scissors, and that way I can get really precise cuts. So for the front legs, I'm just going to push those forward, nuke them like that, maybe a little bit shorter. But anyway, there you have it. The Mask Marauder, you can see it's dark on that side and really light on that side. Oh, i got I got to show you this part. Too. We're not done yet. Um, if you brush it out, you can add a lot of movement with this hair's ear dubbing because it's just going to flow in the water. So this is going to have both kind of the rigid stonefly parts, the wing case and the rubber legs and everything. And then also it's going to have the real buggy dubbing underneath. So check that out. Dark on top, buggy on bottom, and all stone fly. Are you dizzy yet? There you go. Mask Marauder 2.0.